as mentioned, hi, I'm Mitch. I've been working with Rob for the past few years, and more recently I've been working on tidy forecasting tools, the Fable package, and my thesis that was last year and continuing uh, development this year, the Faster package. So what is Faster? It's a tool, a forecasting model, which is suitable for forecasting multiple seasonality, and it does it in a few different creative ways, uh, specifically state switching, which is something we haven't seen employed before. So let's see why we need it. It's because time series data is challenging. It's changing and we're getting more data and it's uh, representing itself more often. We're having more sensors that are collecting data at regular intervals. And this presents a few problems because the patterns that we observe in these time series change. We have multiple seasonality as you observe time more regularly. We have missing values and noise. If you try to observe something regularly, stuff goes wrong, stuff gets weird. And as you observe things more regularly, over the same period of time, you're going to have substantially more data. It adds up really quickly. So we need some new tools to capture this new pattern, and hopefully the tidyverts have got you covered with Sybil from Eero, Fable from Rob and I, and Faster for forecasting. So one of the problems that we see this uh, changing data occurring is electricity demand. Uh, this is the key example that I'm going to be using here, and it's for Victoria electricity, electricity demand every half hour. You see electricity demand observed quite frequently across the world. Some places are as frequent as five minutes, and these really represent some of the problems that we capture uh, for forecasting these time series. So, Take the problem as a simple look. If we aggregate the data up to monthly, we see a fairly simple pattern. As you might expect, it's got annual seasonality, and this is to do with the temperature. If it's hot, people want to cool their houses down and they'll use more electricity. And similarly, when it's cold, it gets pretty cold in Victoria sometimes, uh, they'll heat up the house and use more electricity. However, we don't have monthly data, so it's a little bit more complicated than that. If we had daily data, the pattern becomes even more complicated here is our first look at a multiple seasonal pattern, and it's quite a special multiple seasonal pattern. You still see the annual seasonality going with temperature in around June, um, June and July, we have increased electricity demand for cold uh, temperatures. However, within each week, we have a up and down pattern, and that's to do with working days and not working days. So when people are working, they'll use more electricity, and on weekends or public holidays, less electricity will be needed. And because it's not necessarily a weekend or a weekday, it represents an even more complex problem because it's irregular switching of seasonality. So we'll see more about how to capture that later. Except we don't stop there. Our data is half hourly, so it becomes a mess pretty quickly. Here we can hardly see what's going on, let alone model it. So we need to take a closer look. So zooming in on July, if we've got half hourly data, as you might expect, there's a pattern within each day as well. So as people are awake, going to work, moving around, they're going to use more electricity than when they're asleep. So we have three types of seasonality. Uh, we've got the annual seasonality, mostly with the seasons, the temperature, the workday and non-working day seasonality, which is to do with human behavior, and the in-day half hourly seasonal pattern, uh, which is another one we'd want to capture. So let's take a look at some of the current models and how we would approach this forecasting problem. Uh, notice that MLR is uh, there. If I put it all the way back from when that was started, you wouldn't be able to see anything else. So these models generally come under two different categories. You've got state-space approaches, which can evolve over time, and regression-based models, which hopefully you're familiar with, that tend to stay fixed. You can't really update it for changing patterns. And there's advantages and disadvantages of both. The state-space models, because it needs to filter through the whole observation, uh, whole data set sequentially, they tend to be quite slow. And the current implementations are inflexible as well. Uh, you just take the model, probably some automatic procedure will go through and choose a model appropriate for you. You don't have as much control as I'd like to have when forecasting. Regression, on the other hand, you have the formula-based interface, so it's really nice, it's flexible to specify. It does mean you need to do a bit more work, but it pays off. It's also going to be fast, and uh, you can naturally support exogenous regressors. 
A key problem with state-space models is when they're expressed in an innovations of state-space model, you can't include exogenous regresses. And that's the case for double seasonal hot winters and TBATs, which are the latest uh, approaches for state-space multiple seasonal forecasting. You may have heard of Profit. It's pretty popular. Um, so I like to think of my model as a flexible state-space version, uh, which hopefully is better. So hopefully I can convince you of that by the end of the talk. So what is faster? You, well, hopefully by now it's got something, you know that it's got something to do with uh, seasonal patterns, hopefully multiple seasonality, but it's more than that. It's an additive state-space model which switches between states. So this logo here, our icon, it's an S for a special reason and it switches uh, between different patterns. And that gives us a lot of power for capturing those irregular seasonal patterns. It's hopefully flexible and given the name, I would hope that it's fast as well. And it also supports missing values and exogenous regresses, which many of the state-space models do not. So faster, we started working on this last year, which was before Fable was even began. And you can think of it as the predecessor or like the motivation for why we've created Fable. It was the one that started the formula-based interface and most of that's been ripped out and put into Fable. And it's much nicer now because we get our consistent graphics and it allows us to use it in model combinations, such as our hierarchical forecasting and ensemble methods, if you wanted to combine faster with other models of similar types. As Rob mentioned, Fable uses a transformation, uh, flexible transformation system. If you wanted to do a log transformation, you don't need to write box cox lambda equals zero anymore. You can actually say what it is. It's a log transformation. And you can also join transformations in here. So maybe you wanted a log plus one. It'll invert that for you naturally. Where faster extends Fable is with the specials. So the specials supported by faster are quite long. There's a very flexible way of combining these models. Polynomials will allow you to introduce your intercepts, kind of like your level and your trend. If you really wanted to, you could go beyond that, include quadratics and so on, but it's not normally what you want. Uh, so for level, you would set n equals 1, a first-order polynomial. For seasonal factors, you can think of these as seasonal dummy variables. Uh, similar to how ETS would uh, capture seasonality and the BATS model, you can do the same approaches with FASTA. But what FASTA also allows you to do is include Fourier terms, seasonal trigonometric seasonality. So this allows you to, similar to TBATS, the trigonometric part, the T in TBATS, flexibly control your seasonal uh, strength, I suppose, uh, with the number of harmonics Q. So if you wanted to capture the same seasonal frequency, you can do so with less terms, resulting in a less complex model, which will hopefully be faster to estimate as well by reducing the number of harmonics required. You can also include armor terms, um, similar to what you do with the Rima. So you can see many concepts are being combined here to reduce this model. And as I mentioned, X-regs are super important for state space, so we're happy to, similar to how Rob specified his ARIMA model, you can do the same with FASTA. If this functionality doesn't suit your need, you can also specify custom DLM matrices. Uh, and as mentioned, the state switching is the pride and joy of the project. So this is what the make, makes the model pretty special. Let's go back to the example, the electricity demand. This is a useful example because it captures three different ways that we can capture the three different seasonalities presented in this data. Here's the data itself. So we have demand information. That's the one we want to predict. We have a workday indicator for if it's a working day and not a working day. We'll be using that to switch. And we have the exogenous regressor information temperature. So remember when I zoomed in, we had this uh, June seasonal pattern. You can imagine this as being, because it's 48 um, half-hourly data, there's 48 half-hours in a day. So to represent seasonality in a daily sense, we would need 48 seasonal frequency. And I'm reducing the complexity of my model here using uh, Fourier terms with a number of harmonics of 16. So this will make our model faster to estimate. Because our seasonal terms are centered around zero, and this data is clearly not, I also include a polynomial of order one, a level, and that will help uh, correctly center our seasonality. And I'm using it to model demand. Except this isn't really what's happening. We have this switching seasonality between working days and non-working days. So that's where the percent %s infects operator comes into play. 
This allows you to swap between different day types. So it'll consider this as a factor. If it's a working day, it'll use an, its own set of specials for polynomials and trig terms. And there will be a separate set of polynomials and Fourier terms for the weekends and public holidays. And you can see in the colored graph here that this is going to improve our model by separating out these patterns. There's a different um, level at least and possibly different seasonality being presented for these two groups. So to capture the annual seasonality, we can use our temperature information. Because temperature is naturally seasonal in itself, you have winter being colder temperatures and summer being hotter, this will help us capture not only the outlying heat, um, heat waves that we have in Victoria, but also the overall seasonal pattern for the annual pattern. If anyone's done electricity forecasting before, you'll know that this relationship up here, this uh, quadratic relationship, is highly simplified. So just for demonstration purposes, I'm not suggesting that this is the best model to use, uh, but it is flexible enough for you to include any exogenous regressive patterns that you choose. So how do we put it all together? So we take our data, and like the fork, uh, Fable package, we want to pipe it into our model, and we additively combine our special terms. So we have our switching seasonality we discussed first, and we combine that with our temperature exogenous regressors. And I'm also putting a log transformation on demand to help stabilize the variance. So you can see that we return a Mabel object, and we've estimated our model. What can we do with this model? Well, we can extract the components. This is um, something special to state-space models, and it's something you can do with profit as well. It allows you to look at how the model is behaving and get, generate new insights from the features that it's captured. So one example of this is visualizing seasonality. Here I've extracted my trig terms for working days and non-working days, and you can see there's a slightly different pattern. On working days, people tend to use a lot more electricity in the morning compared to non-working days, except this changes during the middle of the day where uh, the, the work days uh, become use more electricity. So there's different patterns, and that's essentially justifying the use of seasonal switching. So to use it to produce forecasts, it's exactly like you would in the Fable package. You pipe it, your model into the forecast function, provide some new data, and in this data, because we've used extra information, such as what is a working day, what is not a working day, and future temperature information, we want to provide that as well. And this produces a faster object, uh, a fable, and we're predicted uh, a couple of weeks ahead of time. This is what our forecast looked like. So you can see it's captured this complex multiple seasonal pattern. Uh, here are an example of a non-working day. And this example here, you can see there's three days which are quite lower, and that's because there's a public holiday effect here. There's, I think it is Labor Day happening during this period. Zooming in a bit, we can see the intervals as well. And you can see they're quite large. And they're large intervals because we've specified a fairly simple model here. Uh, I expect that more sophisticated models, maybe you include an ARIMA term, or maybe you better capture the temperature relationship, you'll reduce those intervals because it better captures the pattern in the data. Overlaying this with our actual observations, you can see it fits it fairly well. All of our actual values are contained within our 80% prediction intervals, so maybe it's appropriate for this example. Another feature, so fa uh, FASTA does more than just modeling and forecasting. It can also interpolate your data, which is especially relevant for this high-frequency uh, data where we have commonly observed missing values. All you need to do is pipe your data with missing values into your model function. So here's a representation of the missing values in our data. And once we've fitted this data, we can use the fitted values and the filtered uh, response to interpolate our missing values. And that's just using the interpolate function. No extra information needed. One of my favorite features which I've recently added is something that we don't see in any other time series model currently implemented that I know of. And it's the ability to stream data. So say we've modeled this data. Uh, it's quite a long series. It takes a little bit of time. And you want to keep up to date uh, forecasts to the every, uh, every day or every 30 minutes. Normally for modeling functions, you'd need to re-estimate the whole data set uh, to update your parameters and extend your forecast horizon, uh, your model, your fitted values. Here's an example of the streaming data coming in. 
So we, I'm using an extra week as an example. And using the stream data, um, the stream function with my new data set, uh, you can see this section here has extended my model's fit. So going from this one, we want to add this data to our model, and now it's included. And we can use this just like any other Mabel. We can forecast from it, include it in ensembles. It's highly flexible. So in summary, FASTER is a feature-rich state space model for forecasting multiple seasonality. It supports component extraction, interpolation, forecasting, and streaming data. And comparing it with the latest and greatest from state space and uh, regression-based models, TBATS is definitely uh, slow. That takes a long time to estimate. Um, and it doesn't support exogenous regressors. So at least on the state space front, I think FASTER does uh, quite a good job. It's pretty good with speed, and it definitely supports any sort of exogenous regressors you need. And the flexible formula-based specification ticks that box as well. Um, comparing to profit, I, I'm going to leave you to make your own judgments. Uh, this is my judgment of the comparison based on my testing, uh, but I just encourage you to try it out and see what you get. So thanks. Keep updated, and hopefully it helps for you. Thank you, Mitch. Do you have any question? I cannot see. Up the back. Yes, yeah, so you have to be careful when using exogenous regressors. If you wanted to predict 20 years ahead of time, you'll need uh, 20 years of temperature data, which isn't feasible. You can specify these models without um, exogenous regressors. Uh, but it will be the, to the detriment of your model. Um, 20 years of forecast sounds inherently risky to me. Um, yes, I, I understand that many workplaces want you to forecast. So we haven't ported over the simulate functionality, but that will be something that we add to Fable. And I imagine similar can be done for the faster model as well. Any other questions? Down the front? Yep. Um, does it call often to estimate the hyperparameters? How does it estimate the hyperparameters? I wish we could use MLE. It takes far too long, and it, we have to keep it fast if I call it faster. Uh, it uses a heuristic estimation technique. And I want to improve on this, especially um, I want to help it capture more parameters, such as the ARIMA uh, terms. Currently, that's not automatic. Uh, but essentially, the heuristic algorithm filters through your data and then smooths the data and then extracts the variances for your states from that and the initial values from the first smooth observation. But I'm looking into sampling techniques as well to make it faster and better. Yes? That's a good question. Um, yeah, I think it should work. Uh, I haven't tested it so much. Um, it may need some changes to the filtering code, but there's nothing wrong with the theory preventing missing values being in the exogenous regressors. Up the back? Yes. So going back to, oh, I'm already here, the model itself. So I'm capturing my annual seasonality using a uh, exogenous regressors of temperature. And my switching seasonality is important here because um, it's irregular. You don't know when the, well, you know when the holidays are, but most models need a regular switching of seasonalities. Um, yes. I don't understand the question. Identifying which? Oh, identifying the seasonality that we're going to include. Uh, so we have the multiple seasonal um, mult MSTL functionality ported in, and that should help to extract some seasonality, uh, but you do need to specify the frequencies. You can look into some um, periodic grams. I can't remember exactly. Um, but there are methods to look at that 
And I will be looking into that when I want to make faster automatic as well. That's okay. Thank you. Thank you again. Okay. <laughs>